In this segment, I'm going to discuss how to maneuver around in a workspace. You can customize the color scheme of your workspace, including background color, as well as the color of most of the items in the work area, to meet your preferences. To modify the color scheme, go to the Tools menu and select Options. Choose the Color Scheme tab. In the Schemes drop-down list, you'll see the default background associated with each scheme. These default schemes cannot be modified. Notice as I select the scheme, the preview updates to reflect the settings for that scheme. If you'd like to modify any of the settings, you must create a new scheme. To do this, click on the New button. Enter a name for your new scheme, and then choose which existing scheme you want to copy the initial settings from. Click OK to create the new scheme, and now you can modify the settings for your scheme. Here I'll choose the option called Selected. The current color appears in the color field. To change the color, simply click on the color bar. I'm going to choose a purple color and then select OK. The color field updates and the preview updates as well. Now any item I select in my work area will be shown in purple. Note that the gradient effect you saw in the background I was using previously is achieved by selecting the background top and background bottom fields to different colors. If you don't want the gradient effect, you can simply select these two fields and make them the same color. If I choose another category, you'll see that the new options become available in the field drop-down list. When you're satisfied with the color scheme settings that you've chosen, select the OK button. Your selections are now saved to your user profile and will remain the same each time you launch a Libre Design. It's important that you learn how to manipulate your work area view. There are three mouse shortcuts that you can use to zoom, pan, and rotate your view. To rotate, simply hold the left and the right mouse buttons down together and move your mouse. To pan your view, you can hold both the left and right mouse buttons down together and then press the shift key on your keyboard. Now if you move your mouse, the view will pan in the same zoom level that you're currently in. You can also pan by simply holding down the middle mouse button and then moving your mouse around. To zoom in and out, if you have a mouse wheel on your mouse, you can use the wheel to dynamically zoom in and out by rolling the wheel. These three commands are also available on the View toolbar. You can see the pan, Rotate, and Zoom tools are here. Other tools available on this toolbar are Zoom to Window, where you can drag a selection window around the area that you want to zoom to. The Zoom to Fit tool automatically zooms to show the entire model in the work area. These tools are for the previous view and the next view to jump back and forth between views that you've made. You can choose to display or not to display various items in your work area. If you go to the View main menu, you can see all of the items that you can turn on and off. Items shown with a check mark are visible, and items with no check mark are turned off. Now I'll turn on the reference geometry by going to References and then choosing All. You can see that all of my reference geometry including planes and axes, are shown in the work area. As mentioned before, the Design Explorer is an integral part of your workspace. It allows you to easily identify various components of your design. The reference geometry is listed at the top of the Design Explorer, and notice that as you move your mouse over groups of items, the corresponding items in the work area are highlighted. Here as I move over the planes group, they highlight in red in my work area. As I move over the origin, the origin point is highlighted in red as well. 
The same is true for the features and sketches that you'll be creating. As I move over the first sketch in the list, you can see that it highlights in my work area. You'll quickly find that one of the fundamental aspects of 3D solid modeling is the ability to identify and select individual items and components in your design. As you move your mouse over an item in the work area, the item is going to highlight. The cursor will change to signify what type of item that you're highlighting. In this case, I'm hovering over a reference plane, and the mouse pointer indicates a plane by showing the reference plane icon. Next, I'll hover over a face, and the cursor notes that I'm on a face. If I left-click to select that item, the face will change colors, denoting that it's been selected. If I move the mouse pointer over an edge, you'll see that the cursor changes and the edge highlights. If I left-click to select it, it stays highlighted, noting that it's been selected. As we progress through the training series, I will instruct you on how to select various items in the work area or the Design Explorer to complete certain commands. As you create 3D geometry, every face, edge, and vertex on the model is given a unique number. These are all listed in the Design Explorer. You can see as I expand each group that they're listed here. As you move over each item, it's going to highlight in the work area. You can easily identify and select items in the Design Explorer as well as the work area. You can select multiple items on a model. To do this, select the first item by left-clicking on it. Then hold the Shift key down and left-click on the next item to select it. You can continue to click on and select as many items as you want while pressing the Shift key. You can see here that I've selected three faces using this method. If you want to select items from within the Design Explorer, you can select a series of items by left-clicking on the first item, and then holding down the Shift key and left-clicking on the last item in the series. All of the items in between will be selected as well. To select multiple items that are not in a series in the Design Explorer, hold the Control key down as you make your selections. One of the benefits of solid modeling is the ability to go back and edit work at any time. To edit an existing feature or a sketch, you simply right-click on the item in the Design Explorer and select Edit. In this case, I've chosen to edit the first sketch in the tree. You can then make any necessary changes to your sketch, and I'm going to double-click this dimension to modify the value. When you've finished making your changes, you can press the Activate 2D Sketch tool to exit sketch mode and return to the 3D model. You can then press F5 on your keyboard to regenerate the entire model if you wish. Creating 2D sketch profiles is the first step to creating 3D geometry. We'll discuss 2D sketching in depth in the following segments. If you haven't done so already, you should go to the Home window and select the Tutorials tab. Expand to Level 1, getting started in the Libre Design folder, and then go through the General Topics tutorial. This tutorial will reinforce what you've learned so far in the video training series.